In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make fantastic looking Warhammer 40k ruins using only these two templates. Feel free to download these in the description below. Print them out, trace them onto whatever material you're working on. I'm using matte board because I had it sitting around. Don't forget to stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you how to take these ruins to the next level. We're adding some intricate details to really make your battlefield pop. Trust me, you really won't want to miss it. So my medium of choice today is going to be XPS foam, but you can use whatever material that you want to use, whether it's cardboard or foam board or whatever. But today I'm just going to be using the usual for my build, which is XPS foam. And I'm just going to trace out both of these. You could also, if you're using a foam cutter, just hold the template on and cut around all the foam. But I really wanted to plan it out so I use as much of the foam as possible, if that makes sense. So this is what I'm doing today. Okay, so I've decided on this piece. I don't want to waste this, so I'm going to do a little half section right here. And just cut out some windows as well. Okay, so I'm going to be using a Proxon hot wire cutter to cut out my terrain. But you don't have to do that. You can just use a knife. Any hobby knife works. Just take it nice and slow. Look at it from above. And just eyeball it. We're making ruins. So it's okay if they're a little bit crooked and whatnot. So don't worry about that. Just take it nice and easy. Straight lines. And you know, that's straight enough. See, it'll sit straight. It looks fairly straight on the table. You can see that. Anyway. Just wanted to make a note before I start cutting. Not everybody has the tools that everyone else has. So don't worry when you see somebody cutting with a prox on a hot wire cutter. You don't need that to build terrain. Okay, it looks like I have enough pieces cut out now. Um, you'll see I haven't cut out the windows yet. You can do those on the Proxon. I'm going to be using this interchangeable tool. If you're interested in this sort of thing, I do have a link in the description. It's pretty cheap. Go ahead and check it out. It'll give a little kickback to the channel too. Okay, so I make sure that I work in a well-ventilated well area. So let's move these other ones out of the way. This is a big stack of the L shapes. And these aren't cut out very good. You can see right here that there's issues. Um, it doesn't matter when you're doing ruins. We're going to be cutting up the edges a whole bunch. So, And same with the windows. That's why I'm not using a Proxon for the windows. It's because it doesn't matter if the windows are exactly the way we need them to be. So yeah, like I said, make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. That's a little more than I want. So... That's ugly. It's ugly, but like I said, it doesn't matter too much because it's a ruin. Make sure you don't get your finger while you're back there. I don't know how close that came, but I feel like I was concentrated on filming and not cutting. Okay, so I got all that done. I decided not to even go by my guides, and I just put the template on and cut it out. I was getting a lot more straight windows. I know I said I'm not too worried about it, but some of them were looking kind of wonky. I mean, look at those. Kind of wonky. I guess it's good enough. But anyway, if we got them all cut the out. The next step, we're pulling out the hot glue. So we're starting with an L, and then we're doing one of these. Throw a line of hot glue on there. Place it on our build. I'm going to hold it there for a second just to make sure it doesn't move anywhere. And that's what we got. I got a little tiny bit of a ledge there just for decoration. And I want to add that this doesn't just work for 40k. This is also good for fantasy games. This, this right here is already looking like a temple or something. So, and I'm going to add another one. Oh, we need it to be the same height. How'd that happen? So I'm just going to cut 
some of this guy off with my blade. Doesn't completely matter how you do it, but you'll want to take that off. So there's that. Just a normal blade. Doing a line there and a line there. And we're going to add it to our build. Grab another one. We don't want this one to be complete, so I'm just going to take a little bit off both sides. We're going to chip them up more later. Do a little bit of glue around the outside of the ale, like so. And attach. This is like the easiest way, in my opinion, to do ruins like this. And also, they end up very sturdy when you're done. So that's the second floor. We're going to take this piece that we just used. Throw it up right there. Mm -hmm. I need to have one that matches the height. I don't know how I got two different heights, but I did. It's okay. It's okay. We'll just make sure to put the same heights on the same level. No problem. All right, there's our second floor. There's a bit of a gap there again. There's more of a gap this time. Like I said, we're going to fill it in, so just try to keep it flush with this piece. See, that looks like it could be used for fantasy or sci-fi. That's the whole point of these ruins. And that is basically our first ruin. Okay, we're going to add some chips and stuff in a little bit. Not like the kind you eat, but like chips in the thing. And this is approximately nine inches tall, which is what I was going for. You could do another story, have a 12 inch tall building. And I'm not doing a base. It's going to be more modular than that. Some of these I'm going to do lower and you can stack or whatever. You can even put magnets in these, like each section. Like you could magnetize the bottom of each section. That way you can just stack when you need. It'll be extra modular. I'm going to finish gluing all the buildings that I need, and then we'll get on with the next step. I've already been working on this piece. We're using a hobby knife, and we're just going around all these edges and making them not so smooth. Just breaking them up with my fingernails and chipping at places with a hobby knife, adding some holes here and there with the point of the hobby knife, chipping the windows, just to give it that worn out look. When you're done, it's gonna look something like this. Or at least when I'm done, it looks like this. Now on to the next step, which is texturing our project with a little bit of foil. It's a little bit hard to see, but it does create enough texture. Okay, let's see. Let's just texture this side a whole bunch and I'll show you. A little faster than I normally do. I'm chancing breaking it apart. But... Let's roll this across here. You'll see that added quite a bit of texture to our project. And that detail is really going to pick up when we start to paint it. But first, we need to move on to the next step. And that is adding some details. So I saved some of these offcuts from us doing this. And I'm just going to take pieces of them. And we're going to add some rubble. So we're just adding a few pieces just to get a little more broken up looking. So you can't add more detail than that, but I usually find less is more when adding this kind of detail. And then you'll still have places for your miniatures to stand. We need to fix this right here. And it doesn't necessarily look bad having that line, but it doesn't match this side. There's a quick, easy fix for this. It might cost a little bit of money. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. It's opening it. So this is spackling compound. And this particular one is pink, but it dries white. 
That way you know when it's completely dry. I'm going to take a little bit of it. I think you sh shouldn't just use your finger like that. I read somewhere it can be toxic, but I'm not too sure. So be careful. I'm just going to get it into all the cracks with my finger. Texture it a little bit. This is just a little piece of napkin. I'm just going to texture it with that. And I can throw it away after. And then I don't dirty up my aluminum ball. And see, that covers up that. Right now it is pink, but like I said, it's going to dry white. You'll see that when I'm painting it black. All right, now it's time to paint black. Today I am using this black house paint. This is by Rust-Oleum. It dries fast. The only downside is it's kind of charcoal instead of black. And I do know that a lot of people use Mod Podge and black paint. You can use that too. Today. I'm using the house paint. It does just as good of a job, if not better, in my opinion. It sticks everything together and protects it really good. Okay, the next step is going to be painting everything that we just painted black. Actually painting, and we're going to give it a just a basic paint job. So this is going to be pewter gray, followed by a dry brush of antique white. And that's all I plan on doing. We'll see if it works out that way in the end. Also, I do want to say that you don't have to do just gray ruins. You could do, like, tan colored and make it in the desert or whatnot, or whatever. Green, purple, beige, brown, whatever color you want, it's up to you. I mean, you could even just simplify the paint job even more and just dry brush it with a light gray and it would look great. So it's up to you what colors you use. For me, I'll be using these two. Get some of the gray paint on my brush and go to town. It's a relatively quick paint job. We don't have to add any details because they're all added already. See, you can see all the texture in the holes already, so we can just do this simple gray paint job all over. Doing a bit of an overbrush. I'm not doing like a solid paint job. That way we don't have to do a wash and bring out the details later. We can just dry brush, which in my opinion is better. Okay, so lately I've been dry brushing with one of these cheap chip brushes. And like I said, I'm just using that antique white highlight and i get most of the highlight off the brush and the good thing about this one is it doesn't go in the recesses too much and when i'm dry brushing i tend to do all the edges first kind of like an edge highlight but with dry brushing Okay, so I don't even rinse these brushes out. I just leave them there hanging dry. And when they get too built up with paint, I throw them away. Because I bought a package of about 100 on Amazon. And it's pretty cheap. I think it was like 20 bucks. I'll find a link and throw it in the description if you're interested. I find these chip brushes really useful in crafting. Definitely get you some. They're also good for painting things black on like larger surfaces. They'll lose a little bit of hairs at first, but you can pick them out pretty easy. Um, after you get a, the brush broke in, the hairs tend to stop falling off. Okay, now here is what we have so far. Like I've said a few times, this sort of terrain can be used not only for sci-fi war games, it can be used in all sorts of dioramas and fantasy games as well. It's pretty generic, 
There's nothing about this that says specifically it's meant for sci-fi. Um, that said, I do want to add some details just for a little cherry on top to this piece. This is a little experimental piece. We're going to go for a little bit of a desert theme on this. I'm going to show you some things. Let's get into that. I just filmed a bunch of stuff and I was talking and I didn't realize the microphone was not on. So I can just show you again. So what I'm doing here is adding sand like so, kind of sweeping it up into the rocks. And I just add the sand dry, make a little pile of sand, and then I add some really watered down PVA glue. And it's going to soak into that sand. And it's going to dry relatively quick because the sand tends to soak it up. But yeah, this is just the first detail that we're going to add to our little desert piece of terrain right here. So these are both by AK. And I will have links to these in the description, but I do want to say I have a preference for gamer grass. I'm just out of the colors that I want right now. Normally, I would use a little bit of super glue to add these to this, but where the sand's still drying and I want to put it where the sand is, I'm just going to be using PVA glue if I can find it. Where did I put my PVA? So this little thing is just slightly diluted PVA glue. It's normally I get all the grass tufts I need separated out. It's usually good to use more than just one color of grass tuft. I usually use two. Just gives it enough variety. Let's start adding some of these. Two. Power build. Let me see if I can get a better angle. Okay, so all that took overnight to dry, but it's actually a couple days later. And I want to show you how well it turned out. So I don't normally like the look of the raw sand, and I would normally add maybe a little bit of a wash and a dry brush to blend it in more. But I think with this piece, it looks pretty good. Same with the grass tufts, and you'll notice it's really hard. It looks like the sand's just sitting there, but because of the watered down PVA glue, it's all glued together really nicely. So. Now, we are going to be adding these guys to some of the spots. Okay, sorry about the little interruption. Had to talk to my mother. But while I was doing that, I added these little skulls. They look pretty good. I really like this section right here, the big hole, one of my favorite spots. So I had to make sure I added a little skull there. It's going to be the perfect place for a miniature to stand here and like shoot out or whatever. Okay, so I think one of the last things I want to do is add a wash. I'm using a little bit of black and a little bit of brown. It's kind of a burnt brown, so I get more of a rich tone. And then we're gonna mix the water in. I'm gonna add a drop of flow improver. And then we'll mix it up. See, it's not black, black. It's a nice subtle tone of black. Let's work on this section that I said I liked so much. Okay, and I am gonna let this kind of drip down the side like it's been weathered. That's just a little bit of a squirt of water to help give that look. It's almost like painting with watercolors. The little bit of rain that this place gets, you can tell, has been washing dirt and stuff down the cracks of this building. I'm just going to do it wherever it looks like it should have some sort of water falling down off of it. And it's just going to add subtle detail, make your terrain look a little bit realistic. Okay, let me just build it up until I'm happy with it. I think that looks pretty good. I don't like this tuft right here very much. Where is it? Right there. That's kind of ugly. I don't know if this is going to help it, but we're going to do that. I'm not sure why it looks like it has super glue on it, because I didn't use super glue. Mm -hmm. 